Hey everybody and welcome back. So I'm really excited doing these video series. I didn't think I would get so many people reaching out to me on my Facebook uh, basically saying we love the fact you're going to do all these different video series. So if you don't know and you're new to my channel, I love model aviation and I also am building an ultralight aircraft. So I kind of jump back and forth between those two. But in the last 15 years, I've built four really large model airplanes. One was a B-36, a C-130, which that the video, this video is about that. Uh, the MSL-1, which is a vintage airplane that had open rigging. And then the MSL-2, which was kind of a 1930s racer plane. So I'm doing video series on each of those. And one of the reasons I'm doing it is I never did detail... Uh, videos. I mean, on RC groups and some other places, I did a lot of posting of the pictures, but I never really explained in detail. I was just kind of doing a photo dump. Um, but in these video series, I'm going to really dive in deep. So if you just look at the left here, this will be all the videos that will cover the C-130 video series. So let's get this boat out of the harbor and get going here. So uh, before I get too far, I want to talk about my awesome sponsor. If you need bolts, nuts, lock washers, lock nuts, nylon, nylock nuts, um, boy, let's see, servo screws, any of the stuff for your RC project, go to rtlfasteners.com, use code DA30, and you'll get 30% off any order over 50 bucks. Really cool uh, deal there. So let's zoom in a little bit. So... Basically, this is the airframe design video, and we are going to talk about what it took for me to create plans and drawings that I can make this airplane from, okay? I mean, that, to make a long story short, that's what this was. So what I ended up with was really nice CAD drawings that had all the station lines. And if you don't know what station lines are, basically every time the fuselage uh, maybe changes a shape or has a piece of equipment in it or something, you have a station line and that's where you're going to build like a bulkhead or if, or if it's a wing, it's a rib. So this was after uh, almost two years of doing the drawings and I'll explain toward the ends how I, I made these drawings, okay? This was all the bulkheads once I was done. This was the nose section with the nose uh, retract gear, and we'll do a video specifically on retracts. This was the main retracts, and this was really the most problematic part of designing the fuselage was building the bulkheads that would uh, support the mounts that the landing gears were mounted to, because I used real jack screws like a real C-130, so these wheels would go up and down exactly like a C-130. Um, when I got into designing the nacelles, this was really problematic because I had a Hacker A60-16L's electric motors and I wanted the battery to slide in behind it and I was going to use uh, eight cell batteries. So I was gonna have two four cells um, Velcro together laying on each other's backs. I wanted to have at least 4200 milliamps and it would slide in there and I would end up with just a colossal amount of power being 8S, but I could throttle back and get pretty long flights. But if I wanted oomph to get it off the ground, I, I would have the oomph to get it off the ground. The wing design went through two iterations because I didn't like my first flap designs. And we'll go through that in the video where I talk about the wings and flaps. But it did have Fowler type flaps that they went back on tracks and actually increased the wing area. And I do calculate that into my cubed wing load. So it was really, it was really interesting. Um, the tail was pretty straightforward, but just so you know, all the airfoils I designed on this, I used my software called CompuFoil. So the wing airfoil and wing design, the horizontal stab and vertical stab was all done in CompuFoil. And then I started my just rough uh, datum line of understanding where the CG was on the airplane and where I needed to place um, basically my equipment within it. The fact that the electric motors on the, are, on, are on those long cells and the batteries were going to be right behind the motor and the ESC was all going to be basically ahead of CG, I was not going to have a problem getting the CG right on this airplane at all. 
there was not going to be any added ballast. Not to mention, I had a lot of batteries that ran the ramp system, that ran the um, retracts, and ran the uh, receiver. So there were um, eight batteries for the motors to fly it, uh, four cells, you know, two each in series. And then I had another five batteries in the nose that ran the systems in the plane. Then I created a spreadsheet while everything weighed and was looking at what my weights were going to be and what my wing loading was going to be. This plane was going to have a pretty high wing loading. I mean, I know it had a 180 inch wing, but it's not a wing. It's a long wing. Um, it's a very long aspect wing. It, it doesn't have a lot of square inches, to be honest. It, it just, it looked like a big wing, but this wing compared to my other airplanes was going to have a high wing load. And, um, Oh, it would have flown great, but you know, it just, I, I hate it when I build a heavy airplane. But now we want to talk about where did I get all of the information from to be able to create my drawings. When I was first early, early on when I was first talking about designing the C-130, I had a couple of uh, people reach out to me actually that was in the military and said, hey, do you know what a TO um, uh, is? And I said, no. And they said, well, it's all the manuals for the C-130. And these are all declassified. We're not giving you anything top secret. But if you want some of the TO manuals, we'll give you TO manuals. Well, the cool thing about the TO manuals was is it didn't really give me a lot of dimensions. I already had the dimensions. I already had the station lines, the water lines. I already knew the shapes that I needed. But I really didn't have any idea where the systems in the real C-130 went. And I always like to look at that because it gives me an idea on the model where I can place stuff. Um, like on the ailerons here, you can see um, in the upper left-hand quadrant of that aileron, there are some big counterweights uh, that balance that flying surface. If you don't know, your flying surface should really be always balanced. On model aircraft, our linkage is normally tight enough and our airspeeds are slow enough that we don't get flutter. But if you uh, statically balance all your flying surfaces, they can go really fast and never flutter. And I try to counterweight as much as my big airplanes as I can, the flying surfaces, but I was amazed on the C-130 just how big the counterweights were on the ailerons. When I looked at the flap system and the track system, this helped me immensely in creating my own track system for the flaps to run back and forth uh, on the tracks and to get the geometry right. Then I looked at just the way that they uh, had the um, floor of the cargo area. I mean, keep in mind, I have something like 3,000 pages out of like five manuals of all this stuff. And it really helped me understand how to place all the systems in my plane. And it helped me immensely, like on the landing gear here. I really had no idea how I was going to do this landing gear. And I started looking at the tracks that their jack screw system ran up and down on. And it, it gave me the spark of light that helped me design my own C-130 uh, landing gear. And when I talk about, you know, the, um, the watermarks and the station lines and all the different things in the aircraft, a lot of that can be found on the internet pretty easy. And you can kind of start deciphering what it means. And uh, in the upper left-hand corner of this, it shows basically what a cut through would be at one of these station lines. And that's one of the best ways that I have found to, designed, uh, to design the airframes. And here's one of the wings, and then the cells and the fuel tank. Now, keep in mind, when I was originally going to have an air system for my nose gear and the ramp, I was going to put air bottles in the external fuel tanks on the wings. But I, I decided to go a different direction. And that's this update, everybody, or this series. I shouldn't say update, but uh, the next one's going to be on the fuselage. And... Um, that is a really cool uh, trip that I took on designing the uh, fuselage and everything. So I hope you enjoy this. The C-130 was an incredibly cool project. I learned so much about going places that I never thought I would go. And that's all I hope that anybody watching this, if you want to scratch build and build your own airframes, um, you're going to have failures. And, and I hate that saying that you learn from your failures. Because failures cost money. You know, if, if you build an, an entire wing and decide that wing's not right because the flap system's not right and you throw that wing away, 
you've thrown away hundreds of hours probably, and you've thrown away probably $100, $150 of materials. So I do so much research at looking how other airplanes are built, how other builders build, and then try to conjure up my idea of how I'm going to do it. So all I would do is beg you to do the research, to go out there and look at uh, the way other people do it. Keep in mind, though, 80% of the people are going to tell you how to do it have never done it. And that will lead you down a rabbit hole and it will become really frustrating and you'll want to give up. But listen to the people. You know, I follow a lot of people that build top gun type aircraft or go to the masters and I look at the way they do their airframes because, you know, they're very detailed and very scale, but they've still got to get all of the equipment into that airframe. So just, you know, don't be afraid to try but do it in a kind of a calculated way, okay? So I hope that makes sense, everybody. I'll try to have the next update video on this within the next week. Like I said, the next, uh, I, should, I shouldn't say update video. It's a series video. So the next series video will be on the B-36 and then the MSL-1, and the MSL-2 won't start for probably another two or three weeks. And of course, I have my updates on my ultralights. But I have a real job and an awesome family, and I'm only doing this late at night. So be patient, okay? Rock on. See you next time. Be safe. Take a kid flying. Seriously, get kids into airplanes, not video games. Take care. See you. Bye.